Hey there, it's Bill with Smart Trades. It's Wednesday, February the 2nd, around 11.35 a.m. I'm going to do a brief report today, and uh, right off the bat, I'd like to look at the S&P 500 cash. We're looking at it on a 15-minute chart here. I'd like to bring your attention to uh, what I believe is a five-wave structure developing in the uh, S&P on the 15-minute, and also uh, the confirmations of breadth and uh, momentum that occurred on these rallies. Uh, as you'll note here again, that we have what I believe is a five-wave structure developing up. We've got one up, two down, three up, four down, and I think we're going to go to uh, uh, a moderate new high uh, to complete five waves up. Uh, now, the, the depth of the following uh, correction remains to be seen. Basically, I'm going to stick with uh, what I had in the last report. Uh, I think that a, a fairly uh, large correction is, uh, is well overdue, but uh, as always, we'll take, <laughs> excuse me, we'll take that one step at a time. I'd like to bring your attention, though, to the fact that on uh, these r the rallies here, we had strong breath. In fact, the breath was going up on wave one. We had uh, declining breath on wave two. Also, uh, the momentum based on the ADX. This is a very short-term ADX that I, uh, a proprietary variation that I use. And you have, again, wave one with the ADX up, wave two with the ADX down. In fact, the ADX even formed an ABC. Breath was going down in wave two. Breath ratios peaked on uh, wave three, as did the ADX. And from there, they've dropped off as we uh, are going into what, again, I believe is a wave four. Uh, ideally, what we're going to see is perhaps a little bit of a rally uh, in both uh, momentum and, and the breath ratios, but they will make lower peaks relative to the uh, third wave peaks as the market makes one last new high. Um, targeting for that fifth wave uh, is the classic Elliott wave, uh, one equals five. When wave three is extended, the tendency is that uh, the other two waves will uh, tend towards equality. In this case, one equals five, assuming uh, uh, the low is in or approximately where we are uh, right now today. It's going to come in around 13, 14, 50. Now, obviously, uh, as always, we want to take this one step at a time. If any of these pieces don't fit, if we go flying through uh, 13, 15, if breath ratios start to make new highs, if momentum uh, increases dramatically, uh, it would negate this count and I would have to take another look. What's interesting here is when you look at the longer term picture, this is the S&P cash daily, and you connect the recent highs, that trend line comes in right around that 1314, 1315 area over the next day or two. So uh, we have both that very short term target at 131450, and that coincides approximately with the uh, uh, trend line uh, resistance, which should come in just over the market. Now, if we blast through there, the next trend line resistance is up around 1325. Um, one thing I would like to say is that the pattern from uh, what I have labeled here as the previous fourth wave down around uh, 1170 or so uh, has, you know, it still does not count out clearly. Um, uh, as, as nicely as this uh, short term pattern uh, from Friday's low uh, counts out as a five wave structure, the pattern from uh, the uh, late November low does not count clearly as, as a uh, completed structure. So, uh, you know, it's certainly possible that I'm wrong. Nonetheless, I think that this is a juncture to pay attention to. Uh, obviously, I've been premature in calling for a top on the longer term basis. That said, these divergences that we've looked at in the short term targets have actually worked out pretty well for at least creating short term peaks and uh, short term corrections. Uh, that said, again, Longer term, uh, you know, I've been guilty of calling for a peak and then having the market uh, move higher. So uh, we'll have to see once again. But again, what we want to see is the divergences, the failure at approximately 13, 14, 13, 15, and then have the market roll over. Um, now the bond market. This is a 60-minute chart of uh, TLT. That's a surrogate for the 20-year uh, Treasury bond, or uh, it's a I should say it's a 20-year Treasury bond fund. Um, anyway, uh, we've been noting in my newsletter for the past uh, uh, several weeks or so 
that uh, the bond market, in particular TLT, is starting to form what looks like a, uh, a, a potentially terminal wedge. Um, we're getting down into that area now around 90. Uh, I think the low today was uh, 89.90. That's just about dead on this uh, trend line here. What we want to see for, uh, for the TLT is to see it go down there and hold and then have an impulsive rally off of that low. Ideally, it's going to break through the top of this wedge. Perhaps there'll be a, a buy signal up there. Uh, I'm going to try to update this in, uh, in my Twitter feed for, uh, for my clients. If you're interested in that, please contact me uh, through my website. It's smarttrades.com. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also obviously contact me directly uh, through the uh, uh, YouTube uh, Messenger service here. So uh, anyway, that's about it for now. Hope you're having a great day and a great week uh, ahead. We've got a couple more trading days to go, so we'll see. Who knows, we may see something today. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like it, but uh, tomorrow and Friday could be very interesting uh, if these uh, two markets play out as expected. Thanks again for watching, and have a great afternoon.